everyone, and welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, also known as Wolf. Uh, we call it PRT for short. A lot of people do. And uh, we have a show for you today. We're going to get into it uh, on this uh, fine evening. Um, I have two people with me today. Uh, Anthony's going to be with me at, 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 for the intro, at least. And uh, Tony. The one and only. Mushu. The Mushu. Has returned. For one, no, oh, not one night only. We don't know for sure. For this night, definitely. I, yeah, I appreciate the- you. I was going to say, I appreciate you letting me out of the closet. Uh, oh, yes. You kept me in there because I guess I was getting too much of a fan base. Against my advice, he, uh, we'll, him. we'll flood him out. Yeah. yeah. But it's only so that we could be in the same room at the same time so people are finally convinced that we're two different people. Which you still wouldn't know because it still could be one guy doing two voices. Yeah, that's because why I'm only we're not talking. On camera. I'm not, I'm not going to talk when he talks, so it really confuses people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... So what we have tonight, let, let's go ahead and start with this, po- prtpodcast.com, that's the website, P- Josh Turner at PRT Podcast, send me your stories. Um, you can friend me on on uh, Facebook, but like I say every time, please uh, let me know that you are a fan or a listener of the show, and uh, that way I can uh, prove your friend request, otherwise I probably won't. Don't forget, we have Tuesday's live stream, live stream on Tuesdays between 7.30 and 8, typically when it gets started, and we go three hours, probably. That's the average. Last uh, time, and I don't know when this show's going to drop, but the last show that we did as of the recording of this, we did for four hours. I think it was four hours and something. It was almost five hours, I think. Four hours yeah, and 40 it, minutes. It mm-hmm. goes on, and uh, because you guys just sit there and you just read and talk. And that's all. That's all it is. Yeah, we just, and it's, it's it's so it's really enjoyable just to see you interact with your community and stuff. Yeah, I remember when I did it way back, and it was a blast. Yeah, you you didn't do too good. But anyway, we're gonna get into wow. that. So the thing is, uh, <laughs> these shows are important though because a lot of people we figured out that only about twenty to thirty percent of our audience actually listens to the live or watches the live stream. We are. We have a lot of listeners on other platforms. We're on seven different platforms, so we figured it out that kind of where our fan base is, and a lot of it is in the podcast. Um, we're trying to generate more buzz about the uh, YouTube uh, exclusive live stream because you can come and ask me questions, and you can jump on there, and you, we can interact with one another. And if there's questions you have about the show, you know, then that's where to do it. Um, we are, man, as of this recording, I don't know when it's going to drop, like I said, but we have a bunch of people lined up to do the show. Um, people are now actually getting to the point where they're coming to me. I don't have to hunt people down. Um, not as far as guests, but I mean like, you know, people who have books and other show that they do shows and things like that. And, and I'm interacting with a lot more people because um, the show is growing. And uh, used to, I'd send somebody a message. They might respond. They might not. And then now, it's typically they do. I got I got to give credit to the people though that have been there since the very beginning. Have always been nice to me, like uh, Ken Gerhard, uh, just wonderful guy. Opened doors for me left and right. And and uh, Lyle Blackburn's him and Nick Redfern. From the first time I talked to them, they've been very gracious and nice to me. And we have a show we're going to do with them if if it hasn't already released by the time that we do this one. Um, I'm assuming this one's going to be released probably pretty soon. This will be in October. I would hope so. Yeah, it's going to be. I think this one's coming off the heels of Barton Nunley, the third episode of Barton with Barton Nunley. So it's going to kick off October, and it is it is a little creepy. Um, it is about diminutive little creatures that do things that are not that are not always. Uh, oh well, we're not talking about me again, are we? No, no, no. no oh, okay, yeah. thank God. Yeah. <laughs> so you know the diminutive little creatures that. Uh, do things that uh, are not always uh, on the up and up. Uh, sometimes they're friendly, benevolent, they are, or just uh, benign, you know, and then other times they're just downright nasty and malevolent. It just depends. Little and, heathens. Yeah, so we're going to jump around a little bit tonight on, on this, and uh, it's almost like a little people potluck. So anyways, folks, fasten your seatbelts. Uh, don't forget, if you want to interact with me on Facebook, go to Messenger. Um, send me a friend request. Let me know that you're a fan of the show. Now we do have groups. Tony has Paranormal Encounters, which he totally neglects. Uh, we have Paranormal Roundtable, which is the main group. We have, uh, but Tony claims he's going to start doing better, right, Mushu? You're gonna yeah, do- I kind of took a break from it, but yeah. uh, I'm, lot, but you're I've working. Didn't start going in into it more, and uh, I don't know. It, it was kind of just a moment where it wasn't like I was burned out on the paranormal. I just wasn't 
trying to look for it anymore. And like you would tell me stories and stuff, and I really just get it from you. But outside of that, I wouldn't really yeah, listen. You weren't you weren't like the rest of the team trying to actually help. Yeah, uh, I kind of just well, after yeah. you locked me in the closet, I was uh, like, yeah. "What am I supposed the, to the do?" The closet now? story again. Yeah. Like saying, you know, we have basements which we don't have in Texas. But anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, so basement at the Alamo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or like on Wilfred, he's in the basement the whole time. <laughs> There's no basement. He's actually just in there in the closet smoking with he, he was it with his dog or whatever. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Ken, did the, did the Cowboys win? Uh, the Eagles? Yes, they did. This, this, this is the time. night that the Cowboys and the Eagles played. So for anybody that then Ken had talked to some smack saying that they weren't going to win, I was like, come on, dude, come on. So anyways, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. We have a lot of go- lots of stuff, a lot of things going on in the paranormal world of PRT. And when we talk about paranormal, we do a lot of cryptid based stuff. And people say, "Well, unless the cryptids are not paranormal, they are to me." Because anything that's out of the normal is paranormal. Seeing Bigfoot is not normal. Seeing Dogman is not normal. Seeing aliens and UFOs and you know ghosts are not normal. That's not a normal everyday thing for most for most people, unless you're some sort of shaman. I mean, you know, you're not you're not seeing ghosts all the time unless you're living in a haunted house. Um, so those are par- those are all paranormal to me. And uh, some of the things we're going to talk about tonight are paranormal. And then some of these things are, are very odd. Um, <clears throat> some of them are just you know you can make up your mind. Uh, but don't forget that we do ha- we do put the show on the Paranormal Roundtable group page. So that you can win a book, an autographed book from multiple different authors, and if you uh, if you like um, the show, uh, go there and leave a comment. Tell us, hey, I like PRT. It was a good show, or whatever you want to say, and you will be entered into the contest. Remember that PRT group, the Paranormal Roundtable group page, and we will do the contest, and you have a chance to win some swag, PRT swag, and a book. Um, that being said. Uh, we do have Nelly's group too, Paranormal Lounge. We'll forget about that, and the Paranormal Prayer, Prayer Group, and then we have um, Whisper to a Scream that I'm an admin to, and and and, and Paranormal Truckers. There's other groups, but anyway, those are the three main groups that are ours. And that being said, we're going to get right into this. First thing I wanted to do before we get started, though, I wanted to let you guys know that um, we are going to have a Halloween show. That's going to drop on Halloween, on the Sunday of Halloween. Okay, so anybody that was wondering is asking about that. This is the beginning of October. We're going to go ahead and just tell you right now it's going to drop on Halloween. We're going to have a Halloween show. Uh, Also, we are going to be doing a show with Barton Nunley, Elijah Henderson from Critter Studies Institute, and Roger. Uh, If anybody knows who that is, he's the guy from the LBL. And we did talk about it on the live stream, but a lot of people that listen to the podcast don't, you know, uh, really here don't don't get all of uh, of that so we're gonna do his that's another reason to listen to the live stream that's though. another you reason some of the, you'll, you'll behind miss the it. scenes and stuff yeah. some, uh future you know plans. so you're gonna know the story um he is the person that was the uh, alleged witness to the killings of the lbl and the lbl and he's gonna talk about that at that time when we were doing all that he was in talks with the travel channel of doing a uh, show with them so he wasn't really at, at liberty to talk about the whole so he's going to tell the whole story in its entirety to us um just and so we're going to and then we're going to go over it and we're going to talk about a few things uh not just about that but just different things we're going to see where it takes us then we also have a show set up with me Lyle Blackburn Ken Gerhard uh Barton Nunley and Nick Redfern and it's going to be Bigfoot Dogman Physical or metaphysical. That's the premise behind it. And we're going to do a show together about that. We've already, uh, everybody's committed to doing it. And uh, that will be released, um, I believe, uh, sometime soon in October. So we have a lot of extra stuff we're doing and a lot of uh, people lined up to, to we're going to be interviewing and talking to. So be ready for all that. Um, Robert, Albert Rosales uh, and then uh, a guy named Paul Anthony Wallace. And I did do a, a set with, with Paul Sinclair. And so that's all coming out real soon. Okay. So after this episode, that will be all that stuff's going to start coming out. And so it's going to be one heck of an October. And so be ready. I also uh, am going to be recording with Kenny Irish. He's, an, he's another really good author, um, good guy. And so be ready for that too. He wrote a book called American Cryptids. 
So that being said, let's get all that out of the way. I had to get all that stuff done. Let's get right into this, okay? Uh, the little people stories. Now, Anthony, you had said before that you really liked the little people stories. That you were like intrigued by that. For whatever reason, they seem to be the most interesting to me. They're little and scrawny, and they steal things. That's probably why you like them. Be I would assume sense of kinship. Kinship. There. Yeah. You know what? I actually would like. I would like to get one and just have them ride around a banjo. I think that, that would be cool. That's to like get what one I thought about it. Them, yeah. So yeah, that actually leads me into a story um, that I read, and I don't remember where I read it at. But uh, yeah, it was it was near Detroit. And it was from that area when it was being when it was first founded as a city, before it became like the, in, the indus, industrial capital of the Midwest. You know that where they built cars and all that. And it was one of the settlers that was there, the early settlers, and that had been warned by the natives. You know that they were there were these goblin type creatures that would take their horses and at night it would ride their horses around. And then the next day, the horse would be useless, absolutely exhausted. And it kept happening. Um, so eventually, he went out and he he saw this little diminutive, like, two or three foot tall creature riding his horse just as hard as it could, you know, in, in the pasture. And um, he dealt with the creature accordingly. I don't remember exactly what happened, but he did something to it. You know, I don't remember how it went down. But um, anyways... You got to be careful with them too because they're cunning and they can also uh, throw curses on you and do all kinds of like thing, you know, you know, really gnarly things. And if you anger them, yeah, if you mischievous and stuff, they're very mischievous. Yeah. Um. So we can, we have a ton of stories here. Uh, we can get started just Which about. Also annoys me because like they're mischievous, but they're also vengeful. Vengeful, yeah. Well, a lot of the stories are them doing things, yeah. people retaliating, and then them doing some even worse retaliation. So that seems to be kind of a theme that, I, that I've heard over and over again. I'm going to start off this story uh, in you know in Monterey, Mexico. Uh, this guy actually was living in, in San Juan, and so he would go to Monterey to visit relatives. And uh, I believe he's about my age now, but he said that this happened. Well, actually, he's probably a few years old to me. But he said that this happened to him in Monterey, Mexico. Uh, they were they were visiting a uh, family in the summertime, which has got to be brutal because it's so hot down there, you know, and it's hot here. So it's got to be hot down there. And South Texas is always hotter than it is up here in Central Texas. And so, anyways, he, they were visiting, and, and get this, he's <laughs> – they're visiting, and, and, and his family, cousins, whatever, and they didn't have an air condition mm -hmm. in his room that he was staying in. And there was air, con like the, the window units. Mm -hmm. That's all they had. So there was one in every other room. Yeah, but his. his. So he got the, the short end of the stick. said it was a pretty decent-sized house, though. I mean, but it was on the, out on the edge of town. And uh, he said that uh, it was his cousins told him that there was this little duende. Or little monitos, little duende. They 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 call them, you know. And they told them. They said that if you leave the window open, you know, only do it during the day. At night, close the window. And he's like, man, it's gonna get hot. But they had like a box fan, you know. So he you was using one of those box fans, and and he was leaving the window open at night. He didn't care, and he didn't believe in the story of this little creatures that would come in there. And he said, if these creatures come into the room, they will steal things. And he was like. Bull crap. <laughs> I don't believe this. Kind of like, you know, when I was young and my great aunt would tell me, mijo, the de, de, de hombre lobo and the cadejo and the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I said mentiras. Yeah, okay, I'm going to get, you know, that's, I'm, you know, and then I saw well, one. Well, here's the thing about the hombre lobo and then compared to the little duendes is that the little duendes, you know, when if you hear about them and you hear about like, oh, small people, you're not instantly going to be afraid of them. Well, I wasn't afraid of the Ombre Lobo because I didn't believe in it. Yeah, but uh, like it, those stories still, like there's a certain amount of fear to them that, like you know, that they can generate. Just not for me. About not it. when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. If I you was a hard head little kid who'd been mm -hmm. locked up a bunch of times. You think I gave a crap about a? You I'm know, sure you didn't. But, until uh, I saw it, yeah. <laughs> and then it, then it was like I gave loads of crap. Then I mean, for real, that sounds crazy, but <laughs> I did. I gave a lot. <laughs> yeah. After that, I was like, okay, I was scared to go to the you know outside yeah. the backyard for a while anyway, you know, but. Um, you see something like that's crazy, you know? So anyways, he saw something crazy. What happened to this guy? And we'll call him uh, Miguel. Um, 
he saw something uh, one day in the corner of his eye. He was laying in his bed and he was watching uh, television. He said they had like two channels, you know, and so he was watching uh, the, the TV and it was like black and white. And uh, he said he was like, can he get up to change to move the antenna? And that's something you would never even oh, know don't, about, don't Tony. Say that, but I guess I do. I used to have to be the one that had to go and do the channel when we uh, lost the remote. And I would always have to yeah, go. Yeah, but y'all to, had remotes. I remember a time when there weren't, I was the remote. And I had to yeah, actually. that's what I'm saying. It's like I was the I remote. I had to actually go outside and turn the antenna. You don't even know about that. Oh, you're talking about on the roof and stuff? Yeah, no. Well, it, didn't, it wasn't the roof. It was on the side of the house and you turned it. I remember my stepdad having to go up there and mess with the dish and stuff. With it. I never, yeah, yeah, that's course. a dish. I'm talking about, did you have rabbit ears on the TV? Yeah. Wow. We, I, when I was real young, we had a TV like that. Man, you, it was because we were poor. We yeah, well, really, yeah, I remember your mom, mom having never, you everything. Expect? Your mom having that table. Yeah. I bought her. I bought your mom and, and, and oh, yeah, Chad. Oh, that beautiful uh, table. She still has it. I bought her a nice table. And for, a painting, too. For Christmas, yeah, because I was tired of y'all having that rickety table, so I bought her and Chad that table. Anyways, we're getting off track yeah, here, but anyway. the point is, you know, is that th- th- these little, uh, this little something was in the window, and he was like getting up to, turn, to to mess with the rabbit ears on the TV, and he's like, "What the heck?" And so he looks, and it was like he kept seeing something in the corner of his eye, and it was gone, and uh, and, and of course, you know, he said that the 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 window it was on the bottom floor; it wasn't like a, you know, way up high or anything, mm-hmm. and. Uh, so he kept looking over and he kept seeing something that that looked to him to be about six inches tall. And he, at one point, he woke up half asleep and he said he's one of those people that will wake up and just go to the restroom. They don't remember or anything, you know what I mean? And uh, we talked about that. And he said that he looked over and he saw this thing that looked just like a little man, this with skinny little man with, with like baggy, baggy clothes that were tattered. And uh, he said, it, and I asked him, I said, did it have a little hat? And he said, yeah, it did. Actually, it had a little hat. Um, but he said it looked like one of those little hats you see people wear, like from Brooklyn, you know, in the old days and in the, in the 20s or whatever. Oh, yeah. I know you're you know, about. And he said it kind of resembled that. And uh, it was gray. And he said the skin tone was dark um, and it had black eyes. So he said the face looked kind of menacing, you know. He said he didn't think it was going to hurt him. But it was staring at him, and he he said, looking back, he goes, I think it was trying to see if I was asleep. And he said that it began to climb down off the windowsill, and he thought, am I dreaming? So he's like, I, you know, so then he said he was so tired that he just rolled back over and went to sleep. So he started noticing, uh, <laughs> this is funny, he had tobacco, because all they had was tobacco for home-rolled cigarettes. Yeah. And, uh, of course, this is when he was a little kid, you know. And so he was hiding it in the drawer, and then him and his primo, his cousin, they would go out and they would smoke cigarettes, or frajos, you know, they say in Spanish. So he had the, the, the cigarros or frajos, whatever, in the top drawer, and he said that he was finding less and less of t- less of his tobacco. And uh, I asked him, I said, sure it was tobacco? He said, yes, it wasn't anything else. It wasn't multi, anything like that. So I said, all right. So anyway, the, the little creature, uh, whatever this was, you know, he thought, man, that was a weird dream. So he told his cousin. And his cousin says, "Dude, that's the duende. That's that's not a dream. That is that is a real creature." And he goes, "Are you sure? Because it seemed like it was a dream." And he goes, "Well, they have the ability to make you sleepy. You go back to sleep. They have like this magic power, you know." And he's like, "I am mentiras. I don't believe this, you know." So anyway, a couple nights later, he hears something moving around, and the box fan falls. You know, he sits up, he looks around the room, and he sees something darting out of the window. And he thought, "Man." That point, he was like, maybe there is something to this. Maybe I need to start closing this window <laughs> like they've told me to. And he was worried that this thing might hurt him. And he thought, you know, when he started describing it to his bolito, his grandfather, he told him, he said, ah, that's the duende. You know, that he goes, you know, you don't want to be messing with that. He goes, close your window. And he said, man, muy caliente. You know, it's too hot. Very hot. I can't sleep like that, you know? And so so he said that that uh, he wouldn't even use a cocha. Cocha is a, uh, a blanket, you know? Yeah. And so he'd go to sleep, you know? And so one day he was, uh, one night he was in there watching late night TV, whatever, trying to watch TV. And uh, there wasn't nothing on. So he turned on his little uh, AM radio, you know, little transistor radio, and let music play. Middle of the night, he hears like the music is, like it's, something's messing with it. He looks up 
opens his eyes and he sees this creature running across the, the room with his little transistor radio, his little AM radio, uh, and he's crawling. And then it just like literally throws it up on the windowsill, crawls up the, like quickly, like just scaled it real fast and grabbed it. And he was like, hey, and he, it was gone. And um, so he lost his radio. <laughs> and so he said about, and nothing happened. He said after that, he said there was a few coins that had come up missing, you know, like he had a few pesos that were on there on the, on the, on the, count on the, his uh, dresser. And he said, this thing was gone. He goes, and then after, for about a week, nothing happened. And he said he was riding his bike and uh, he saw this little creature, this little, the, like looked just like the one he, that had, that had uh, gone into his room. But he said it was a little bit different. He, for some reason, he knew it was like not the same creature. And he was with a friend, you know, and his cousin, and they were riding their bikes. And he said, hey, mira, aquí, right there, you know. And so they look, and, there, and there's this little creature with long hair running along the top of a cement wall. And it looked right at him. And so they both, uh, all three of them just kind of stood there staring at it, you know, like in amazement. And eventually it just ran and it jumped off the wall. And they, so they got off their bikes and they ran up and they jumped up on the wall and they looked and they saw it running across a yard. And uh, there was a dog that was laying there sleeping and it ran right by it. And then the dog kind of sat up, looked around and then began to chase it. So it wasn't like a figment of their imagination. It was, it was a real thing. This dog saw it too. And then it just ran through a hole in the wall and it was gone. And he said, dude, that's, that's like the thing that stole my radio. And everybody was like, okay, yeah, right. But his cousin said that, you know, they didn't talk about it, like to the neighbors or anything like that, because they were afraid. They were afraid to talk about it because if you do, you know, it could invite something bad on you and all this stuff. So nobody would really talk about it. Of course, him being from America, you know, living in America and just going there once a year or twice a year, whatever it was, uh, holidays, whatever. He was like, I'm not really, you know, I'm not really from there, you know, and I'm more of an American and I'm talking about this and they're just like, don't do that, you know, and he's like, okay. So he goes back home and he said that he believed that there was something supernatural to this thing because he had a couple of nightmares, which he was convinced were like visitations, like, like uh, spiritual visitations from uh, this thing. Like he thought that it was like, he thought that it, it was on his bed one time like staring at him and uh, he woke up and he didn't like, like got, he sat up quickly and he didn't see it. So he was like, obviously there was something weird going on, you know, like where he was witnessing this creature and it happened once again when he was in the bathroom, he thought he saw it in the corner of his eye, in the corner of the room and it was gone. So it it, it was more than one time that he witnessed this creature um, and he thinks it followed him. Um, but then after that, that was it. He never saw it again. He had a few little weird things happen that were, you know, not even, I mean, not very noteworthy. Just didn't know, no more appearances of it, but like stuff. Nothing else got stolen? Nothing else was missing, no. But he thought things would be moved around. But he believed that it was flesh and blood in Mexico. But for some, somehow it was able to, I don't know, man, this is correct. My theory is that somehow it could astral project itself, like it knew how to travel, you know, astrally, and maybe it was harassing him or something, you know, because um, I don't know. I, I mean, there, there might have been some kind of reason for it, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can try to think of like, even just, you know, the fact that when it finds, uh, like when it wants you to go to sleep when you find it or something, like, you know, it, it can make you feel sleepy so that you may think it, it's not really there. You know, even that, even that is just weird, and it's like some weird tele, like is it some something telepathic, or is it just like a pheromone or scent that he gives off, or something he puts into the air as he runs around? You well, know? that's the big question. It's also the same thing with uh, when, when when you start thinking about alien abduction. I mean, you you go through the same uh, situations of people being abducted, you know, and they think that it's a dream. They feel like they're dreaming. Or something makes them drowsy, you know? Uh, <clears throat> I believe that that's a very similar scenario to that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, we'll move on here. There's a lot of Duende stories from, you know, Mexico, they, they, you know, all, the, all across the Southwest, you know, typically from uh, Southern California all the way through to Texas. 
you get these little duende looking creatures and they typically they're darker skinned. Um, I'll get into another one here. This one happened, um, two of them te- in Texas. One of them, this one was in Carnes County, uh, Texas. And, uh, a guy named Brad sent me this one a long time ago, probably, well, I say a long time ago, probably six, seven months, well, probably longer than that. But it's been several months and I, and I saved it to, eventually talk about it, you know, when we did the Little People episode. But these stories kind of piled up because we were into so many other subjects. They just kind of kept getting pushed down. And Anthony kept going, when are we going to talk about this? When are we going to talk about this? So he wanted to, he, he really wanted to, to, to talk about it. And uh, so he's going to be doing the editing on the show because he's so he's going to hear it. It's not like he's uh, – but he ran into the other room because I guess he was scared of him or something. I don't know. No, no. I, he, I think he went to go get coffee. I think he's scared. So anyway, <laughs> um, the little these little people <clears throat> this person saw – they were in Carn City. This is the weird thing. There were three people who witnessed this. The one guy talked about it. They went to eat at Pizza Hut. I think he said the Pizza Hut or something like that. They had gone to eat something. Um, I believe that's what he said. And uh, so anyway, we talked about it. And, and it's not a real long encounter or anything. But uh, or No, I'm sorry. His friend worked there. And, and they went to pick her up or whatever. And they, they were eating pizza. And so they went out for a drive. And they went out kind of out into the country. And um, they were sitting out um, in this area where actually the weird thing about it is this person heard me talking on Dogman Encounters. And I had told a story, I believe, that was from that area. And he said, I have a story. I'm from there. Um, but he said that it was in, it, it was in uh, Carnes County, you know, out in, you know, out in the same area where this, these Dogman had been sighted. And I believe that I had mentioned that on Dogman Encounters um, about I, th- I think one of the stories was from there, or or it was a story that I had told of somebody he knew. I got to go back and look, but that's it's not that important. It's just a weird coincidence that he knew about of a, of a story that I had told on Dogman Encounters that happened there. Yeah, and I mean he, that's that's kind of the point of our show, though. Is like yeah. you hear these stories and you were like, oh, I'm from there. I have a story like that. Mm-hmm. So then you can tell it. Yeah, and I, b- I believe that story either involved one of his friends or he knew the people who, who did it, and they told him, hey, he told my story on the show, and then he you know, he wasn't there for, for the story, but he knew of it, and it, that's where it happened. And I can't remember if I, if I told that witness's story on the show and mentioned the name of the, of the county or not, but anyways, Carnes County, and there has been a dogman, a uh, couple of dogman sightings in that area. South Texas is full of weird stuff. Um, so anyway... They they were out eating pizza on the hood of the car. They're talking, hanging out, and his friend was drinking. He says he was not drinking, and neither was she. The female was nobody's girlfriend. It was just a friend, and they were all three hanging out. Um, the one guy was drinking, and so he started throwing rocks into, like, a field. And the next thing you know, these three little diminutive, like, two-foot-tall uh, creatures. I don't, I don't want to call them creatures. They look like people. They came out of the field, and they were all holding, like, really primitive-looking uh, uh, spears. And he said, I swear, man, I thought that they, these little things, you know, that they were holding looked like toys. You know, they were so small. And so he was like, they all just kind of looked at each other, and the little people kind of communicated with each other. They couldn't really make out what they were saying. They were just kind of, like, kind of speaking very softly to one another, and then they all three just kind of turned and looked at them and the three, uh, I guess, humans, I should say, they, they were all, like, stunned, you know. But he said that these little creatures look, did not look, like, shocked to see them or anything. Like, so they, they knew about humans. But apparently humans probably didn't know about them. Let's put it that way. Now, I've heard other stories where the little people are shocked as the humans, that they could see them, whatever. He, and I said, I asked him, I said, what, what did they look like? He said, like, lo- loincloth wearing little natives. That's the way he described them with long hair. He said, you take a native American, you know, that you see and just shrink it down to like the size of like, you know, smaller than a a toddler. You know, he said they were probably not even two foot tall, maybe two foot tall at most. And they had little, little spears, you know, and he said that we shine the flashlight on them and they put their, 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 one of them put their, their, their arm up, whatever. And the other two kind of got freaked out and, and one ran back into the field. And he was kind of aggravated because 
He said they were, in the moonlight, they could see them pretty clearly, you know, yeah. and they had their lights on, you know, and so they could see them. You know, there was no reason for his his inebriated friend to blind them with the flashlight. And he said after mind. that, the one put its arm up and then kind of made like a like an angry noise, like, eh, you know, <laughs> and then they turned and the other two just ran. Now, he did say that they all appeared to be males um, and, and that they were dark skinned. Um, and the, the one with the, that put the arm up was the taller of the, of the, and it was in the middle. He was the tallest one and it appeared to be communicating with the other two. Like it was saying something he goes, it, it was like he was telling them to just be calm, you know, cause one of them looked like it was getting kind of antsy, was moving its legs back and forth. And, uh, he was like, dude, it was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen, you know? And, uh, he, that's not the only weird experience he's had, but he, he said that was definitely the weirdest. So, um, now I asked him about the, the other two, if they, if they had had any other weird experiences, cause you know, like stories from whatever, and actually got the uh, female of the group. Um, she had some, some other weird uh, experiences. Her stepmother's, I guess the way she described her stepmother's sister was driving home one day and one of these little little monitos, these little duendes ran in front of her vehicle and it happened about two months prior to them seeing that. But she didn't know about it until she told her stepmom and her stepmom was like, really? So she called her sister up and she came over and they were talking and she said, yeah, um, you know, me and my uh, boyfriend were driving and she goes, I was driving and uh, we were kind of arguing and she's like, and, uh, you know, and all of a sudden this little dude, you know, the way she described it, little dude ran in front of our vehicle and she goes, instantly the argument stopped. Saved their relationship. And we were just like, and I don't, I don't know how bad, how good or bad the relationship was, but it, they could stop the argument and they were just like, you know what, what was that thing we just saw run across the road? I mean, yeah, that, it makes sense. Obviously you're not going to, whatever you had a fight about, it is very unimportant when you see something like that. Yeah. If Mothman flies over your car or dog man jumps on top of it, or Bigfoot or runs anywhere UFO near it. Picks up a cow. <laughs> You're pretty much done with the argument. It's like, okay, what fact, was that? I you think know? that would be the most you have ever felt closer together. Closer, yeah. yeah. But she said it wasn't a terrifying experience. Now and now, here's the funny thing, and not the funny thing because not funny about it. But here's the, here's the odd thing about that though. The 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 dog man story that I got was on that same stretch of road, right out there by that field. So that's really weird. You know, I remember telling a story, you know, and so I was thinking that's, that's odd. You know, that was so weird that that whole, that whole area. Um, but that's, that's a, there's that story. And so. Well, the true, you know, paranormal d- does tend to travel in packs. It's, you know, when you find one thing, you're always going to find you do. something else. Yeah. Usually. And people don't usually. realize the connectedness. We do because you've seen because you see the stories yeah, and you stories just keep are just seeing like, it all over the place. But yeah, I mean these people's stories are so crazy. You just keep getting these, uh, you know. I mean, it just goes on and on and on, and then you're just like, "Good gosh!" You know, and, and folks, I, I, you know, our show has grown by, by leaps and bounds. And luckily, you know, when we first started, I there was no shortage of stories because I've been collecting them for thirty years in journals. I say thirty years; it's probably more like twenty eight. Um, at that, when I, when I first started the show, it was like probably about, you know, 28 years or something like that. Um, cause really I was about 17 when I really started writing most of it down. I, I got stories, but I was just kind of had them, you know, memorized that people had told me, you know, and then I started writing them all down when I was about 17, I guess. And then, um, started keeping them in these little journals and on a more uh, permanent level. Yeah. yeah. And then I had a vindictive ex that burned some of them. So. I had hundreds of stories that, and because it was like every time I talked to somebody, I would be, that I would talk to them. I'd ask if anything weird. We were at Taco Cabana, and one of my friends, Squid, he was like, "Dude, you can't go anywhere without talking about weird stuff, you know, to people." And it was like, I was like, "Well, yeah, it's that because that was my only interest was that or getting into fights." So I was like, "What, what, what would you like me to do? You want me to assault people or do that? It's your choice." Um, so, anyways, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean. Thing about it is, uh, you you have a way of like figuring out what other people like and then finding similarities in that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, one thing I will say is that no matter where we go, uh, the story eventually leads to some kind of paranormal stuff. It does. It always does eventually. 
And, and you've seen more, me get stories from people. It's funny, too. it's like seven times out of ten, they have a story. They do. Yeah, it's crazy. And and we, you know, we hand them our card and and I'd say, yeah, you're right. That's probably a good percentage. Actually, I'd say probably 70% of the people eventually contact me. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Anthony at the gym the other day, and we were, we were, I wish Anthony was on the mic. He could tell you, we were talking to these two twins. They're bodybuilders. And I think all twins are like psychic. They have a connection. And so he, they started telling us weird stories about the shadow hat man, you know, and so hopefully they'll, they'll contact me and get, finish giving me the rest of it. And then there was another guy working out and he was telling me, um, pretty crazy story, you know? And so it's like, you just, you just never know, you know? But, uh, anyway, this story came out of Wyoming. We're going to jump around a little bit. And this one was weird. And now this guy, and it's not, this one's not overly long either, but here's, here's a crazy thing about it. (laughs) This guy went to stay with literally his crazy old uncle (laughs) who lived up in Wyoming. He goes, he lived in the middle of nowhere. Now, it's all crazy old uncles to do. It wouldn't they be a do, crazy yeah, old right? uncle if he didn't. And this, this crazy uncle's probably named Phil. Uh, so any, <laughs> he wasn't, but anyways, he goes to stay with this guy because his pay is, it, well, and it's kind of sad, and I'm not making fun of you, sir. You, you opened up. This guy, he his dad had a drinking problem. So his mother sent him to go stay with the, uh, her, her uncle for the summer. No. And so they had a very nasty divorce and all this stuff. So he went to stay with this guy. And uh, he lived in southern Wyoming in a, in, a, in a very desolate, desolate area. And when he started describing the area to me, I'm like, hold on. I'm like, sir, I already know. I've driven through your beloved state, and I, it was gross. Okay, <laughs> The southern part of it was very not good. To looking. put it nicely, it was But gross. yeah, the southern part. I mean, you the, there's certain areas you go to that's not, it's not so bad. And like you get up there and there, you know, I mean – but there, this area where he lived, it was, I know he's talking about, it's desolate. It looks like Mars, dude. So he's talking about it was like very, you know, he's like, he goes, my uncle lived, he's in Idaho, right? So he go in the very lush area. I know where he, I know where he was coming from because I've been through there too. So then he ends up going to Wyoming and uh, his uncle, um, they called him Cutter. That was his nickname. Told him, you know, he's like, dude, this guy Rarely went to town. It was very boring, just a very, very, very boring but and slow-paced existence, which he kind of needed, he said at the time. Uh, he was a young teenager. Kept him out of trouble. Um, the water worked half the time. The electricity would come and go. It was really bad. You know, he said it was really rough. And he learned something. His uncle actually had a lot of money because when his uncle passed, he left him a humongous chunk of money. But this guy lived like he was a pauper. Okay. Yeah, it was a choice. Yeah. Here's the weird thing. Here's the weird part about that story. His uncle said, t- told him, and it became a, a thing where he would go to visit his uncle for like a few days every year, and they became close, you know, and, and he would go and stay with him in different times, and then he became a little closer to him, you know, and, and over the years, uh, he, he learned a lot from him. He's like, I don't understand why he lived like he did and why he lived out in the middle of nowhere. He was a hermit, very much a hermit. Uh, had told him a story of his uh, one true love. They they were married for several years, and then she passed away, and then he just, that, that was it. That might be it. That, that was m- it, yeah. That might the it. one child they had also passed away. Oh, yeah, I can understand so that. It, so too. he became a hermit, but he never understood why he never bought, he, he never, like, he didn't leave that area. Like, that place where he was at was awful. He was just like, it was gross, you know? Um, so enough talk about that. But the thing is, he told him, he said, when I die, uh, and as he got older, he told him, you know, when I die, he goes, which is coming real soon. And he goes, you know, I'm going to leave you something very substantial. And he said, okay. And so eventually it came to pass about a year. He said about a year and a half after he told him that. And he said, he doesn't understand how he knew he seemed to be in good health. His uncle was very fit. And, uh, he said that, uh, he just died peacefully in his sleep. Well, he claimed he had a little friend, and his little friend was a little guy um, that was about two feet tall um, that looked like a miniature uh, human, according to the guy who told me the story. And he said that uh, he would talk about his little friend, his little friend, his little friend, and he never saw the little friend. Although sometimes he would hear noises around the house and the dog would start barking and freaking out. And once or twice he heard his uncle 
talking to someone. Now he did have a telephone. So that, you know, that, but that wasn't what it was. He said he would be outside talking to him on the porch and they would be conversing. And he thought, man, this guy is crazy as all heck. Well, one day he walked outside while his, his uncle was out there talking. And he said that the bathroom was pretty much off the porch if you're doing the first one. So he walked out to do that. And, uh, he looked over and he goes, I couldn't believe my eyes. I see this little miniature man standing there talking to him with his hands on his hips. And it, the thing just looked over at him and then looked up at the uncle. And the uncle said, oh, don't worry. He's cool. That's my my uh, great nephew. So the little man kind of nodded. And then they conti- he continued to talk. But the little man never moved his mouth. And then he goes, I was half asleep. But after that, I woke up, woke quite up. You know, I walked back inside. So the uncle finishes the conversation with this little miniature person. He comes inside and he's like, what the heck was that thing? I've been telling you this whole time. And he goes, that's my friend. And his name was like Jareth or something like that. And, you know, that's what he said that he remembers his uncle saying something like Jareth. Quite regal sounding. Jareth. Yeah. And so he says, what, what is he? What is, what is that? You know, and he goes, he's like, they live underground. There's, there's a whole little colony of them here. And uh, he goes, they bring me things and we trade. And he goes, what are you talking about? He goes, let me show you something. So he opened up a metal box. This is a pretty neat story. He opened up a little metal box and he had nuggets. He said at the time he was a 13 year old boy. He didn't know what this was. And he said, these are gold nuggets. And he goes, and in exchange, I give them just little common items that you can get at like Walmart. So these little dudes we're handing, we're giving him these little gold nuggets. And he says, these nuggets one day, he goes, I'm going to, they're going to be worth a lot, you know? And, uh, he said that these little men, that the, the, the little man, he told me that, that was wearing a little helmet. Okay. Like a white helmet. And, mm-hmm. and he was wearing a little, a little white shirt. Um, and, and the pants, he said they were like black, if he remembers correctly. And uh, he said that it just looked like a little person. No like, weapons like, on him or anything No like weapons, that. nothing like that. And that was the only, uh, he only saw him by the one guy by himself, right? He saw it several times, but he saw him that one time. But one day he heard a, a knock at the door, like a real faint knock. And he opened the door and he looked and he didn't see anybody. He looked down, there he is. But he never saw like the little two man, of them, right? He just, no, just the one. Okay. And he said the, 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 the little man handed him like a cloth. He didn't hand it to him, but he laid it at the doorstep. It was a little cloth and it was wrapped up in like a little, with a little tie thing on it. And then it took off running real fast and was gone. And he said that when he watched it run, when it turned the corner, there was like a little shed. Then it went behind the shed. It was gone. And uh, he said he picked it up and he opened it up. And lo and behold, there was a little gold nugget. And he said these weren't like humongous jumbo nuggets. They were just little small nuggets, you know? Yeah, that you a little man could carry. Yeah, a little yeah. man could carry, yeah. But he said they were gold and his u- uncle had bunches of them. And his uncle had, you know, a couple different, you know, little metal boxes full of them. And uh, he said that to them, the, those, yeah, the, they're little, nothing. the gold's nothing. That's just, well, it's if all you think about place. it, it's just a pretty, it's really just a pretty metal and that's why we value mm-hmm. it so much. But in all honesty, it's not really needed if you just don't care about those things. Mm-hmm. He asked his uncle, according to what he said, he's like, I asked him, I was like, what, what, you know, when you talk to him, he doesn't speak. So how do you, how are you having a conversation with him? He says he speaks through telepathy, like telepathic communication. Mm-hmm. You know, he uses his mind and he's like, and I can hear his words and he goes, but, uh, and he can, he can hear my thoughts because, but I just, it's easier as I'm accustomed to speaking. I just, you know, I speak. And sometimes he goes, I do, sometimes I don't. And, uh, he told me, he goes, this is absolutely true is what he was telling me. He was convinced. He was trying to convince me that it was true. Um, I'm not saying I don't believe it, but it's, it's a, it's crazy, crazy story to think about, you know? And, and so what ended up happening eventually he would, when he would come back to visit, he wouldn't. He never saw it again, except for that time he stayed there for the, most of the summer. Um, but he asked him about his little friend. He said they age differently than we do. So Jareth had never gotten older. He was didn't look, you know, whatever. So his great uncle lived to be, you know, in his eighties. I think he said. Um, and and so it was. It was weird, you know. He said like, you know, his. And he was. I was. I was like in my early twenties, and he passed away. 
and it was very sad, and his heart just stopped. Like Which just, is also weird, because that means he would have to sell all that gold first. Like, he had to yeah. have really known. He did. Yeah. And that's what he did. He liquidated it, and, and he put it sure, into, yeah. put it in his will and everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he knew exactly. That's that's so, that's crazy. It yeah. makes me believe that he had a very <laughs> peaceful life. You yeah. know, like he, he it was rough and harsh, and, you know, it wasn't... Uh, ideal obviously mm-hmm. you know had the electricity wasn't uh wasn't working but it was one that he was content with you know mm-hmm. and then uh, that, that's honestly respectable yeah and and it, it was a sad story you know kind of that his his great uncle died because he told me other things about his great uncle and I, I don't have time on the show to sit there and get into all that but um yeah it was interesting that the things he told me uh about this uh individual and it was like man i i you know, when he told me that, I was almost like, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, it helped him. It afforded him to buy a house, you know, and, to you know, to this day, he has raised his children and he's told his wife that the money that he got from his great uncle who had no source of income, yeah. you know, was be- due to gold given to him by a little person. I don't and know. He's not like a greedy or evil, evil person to go out there and try to find more the, of this gold. Uh, it might not be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Also, a, yeah. Well, I mean, we know yeah, that. Yeah, we know be. that. But, you know, if you don't really know much about it and you just suddenly stumble upon this, you might, a greedy person might actually try to find more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, I, uh, <clears throat> that's why I'm sure his uncle was so secretive about it. I mean, he was, it's, it's funny when uh, your crazy uncle turns out to just be your normal uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and he, he said it was very odd. You know, the first couple of weeks he was there, it was just odd behavior. Him going outside in the middle of the night, you know, and going to the shed and doing all kinds, you know. And he's just like, and then it was just weird, you know, just weird stuff. And then the dog would bark and then he knew to go outside. And, and eventually he figured it out. He said, I asked him, how many times did you see this little, you know, Duende looking deal? And he said probably four, maybe five times. He caught a glimpse of it, you know, a couple times, but then he saw it dead on. And then when it brought that nugget and just left it there. Did he say how many times, like, it came by? Like, how many times did his uncle do that, no. his routine? Mm-mm. I mean, we didn't, he didn't tell me. I mean, I asked several questions, and I asked him how many times, yeah, did you yeah. see it? And he told me. But uh, the weird thing is, like, he said that he, he, like, it looked down at him. It didn't give him any kind of mental communication, it just looked down at the the at the uh, the, the cloth ra- the nugget wrapped in cloth and looked up at him and kind of nodded its head and then was like whoop jumped off the porch and was gone and then ran real fast around the the was the it shed. trying to buy his silence? I have no idea. Of, if they trade, what did he get? You know. <laughs> well, I'm sure that the uncle would give him things because they would go. Well, yeah, I was saying like, what did he get to earn that gold piece? Well, he probably would probably had a deal. You know, yeah. he knew that the uncle would give him stuff. Um, different things like weird stuff, like he would give them, you know, like according to him, um, like going to the store and he would buy like food, certain types of items, you know, like a grocery store and tomatoes Mm -hmm. was one of the things that they liked. Well, out Uh, there, he was giving, yeah, they didn't have, it's in the middle (laughs) of a deserty area. So it was, you know, certain foods that they would give, give them bananas, you know, and the little dude would put him over his back and run with him, you know? I mean, like, he saw him do that once. And so, like, he saw him running. Well, he saw him running with bananas. So, I, I mean, I assume that – I'm assuming here that, that he bought bananas. That was probably part of the trade. Yeah. Was that he was feeding them some sort of delicacies Exotic. that they probably weren't – Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to get that underground in the middle of nowhere. And so, that's what I'm thinking. And And then, of course, there were different, you know, little – knickknacks and things, you know, like ink pens. He gave them ink pens, you know. I don't know what they were yeah, doing I'm sure, with them. Like, I'm thinking about it now and like stuff that might seem mundane to us, to a primitive world would just be like fantastic. If they were primitive. I mean, maybe they yeah. had some other use for them. I don't yeah. know. Well, I mean, still, it was, uh, uh, these, uh, these are the ones that didn't dress primitive. That was the last story. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, these might have been. More advanced. More advanced. Maybe they were mining. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's gold down there that nobody knows about. Who Maybe knows? Maybe they just needed the ink because they didn't have a way to produce any. Uh, well, he, according to his uncle, too, they lived way deep down in the earth. Like, mm-hmm. it's beyond, like, you know, whatever. But they had an ability to move really fast. And so they didn't have a problem, um, you know, coming up to the to the surface. But 
uh, uh, he, there's another thing. There's another thing I was going to tell you. I'm um, glad we got into that because I asked him about them living down in the earth, and it was predominantly uh, it was it was because they uh, couldn't stand being out in the sun. So most of the time when he saw him, it was in, in the dusk or in the dark, you know, but he could see him because he wore white and they didn't like being in the sun. Um, now they, it was a uh, darker skinned person, but like, but I asked him, I was like, it's more of an off olive colored skin is what he, what he told me. Um, cause well, that was actually my words. I asked him, I said, what would you describe it as? Would it be kind of an off, you know? And he said, yeah, that, that, that was a good description. I said, okay. Moving on, anyways, it was just a weird thing, you know, and, and they traded, and Candy was another one that he told me specifically that his, you know, great uncle would give them. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, like and that, one time that, that he saw, them, sense. He saw him giving time. him an ink pen, which was, you know, like, you know, like he was out there showing him, you know, and. Maybe they needed a new sword. <laughs> who knows? I mean, <laughs> the, the it seems like the ink mightier. pen would be too big for them to, like, I don't know, maybe it would, I don't know. Well, yeah, just, see, that's an ink pen. Uh, if you say these. They're about that tall. It would be like us holding a pole, really. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, was, it would be a bit much just to carry it around. Well, maybe you, you have like a giant pen and you use both hands to draw. I don't know. <laughs> I what have you no mean, idea. Like that SpongeBob episode where they draw that doodle and SpongeBob. The Sponge Doodle? <laughs> yeah, and he has to use it, uh, his whole body just to draw him. So, anyway, that's an interesting story. And I, I, got, I got time. Let's see what time is it. We got time for another one here. Well, real quick, what, is there anything else that he, he, he might have been giving him? Do you know? Not that I know of. I mean, it was mostly just like fruits and candies and mm -hmm. things, edible things, you yeah. know. Um, I'm trying to think if he said anything else. They liked shiny things, but, you know, um, not, you know, not, not like obviously it wasn't so much for them that they couldn't part with the gold. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, well, he remembers. I'm them. sure they like, like shiny, like jewelry when it's like made into something made pretty. into something yeah just like golden rocks probably don't interest them that's yeah that's they probably yeah. that that's a good point you know but uh yeah so but speaking of which we the next story i'll get into this one happened in lansing michigan and now this one is so weird um this one is is very uh it's something metaphysical because this person was staying in a big house that was um he believed was haunted and it was his grandparents' house, and he went to go live with his grandparents um, when he moved out of his parents' house when he was like, you know, his late teens. And uh, his grandfather had given him a watch, um, a really b a big, uh, nice, one of those pocket watches, you know, that was kind of a, you know, you, 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 the, the ones with the chain, you know, you don't see people use those yeah, nowadays. Yeah, the ones yeah. with the little, like, thing on top that you press and it opens yes, up. Yes, and, 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 and yeah. you, you open it up and then it's got a... Like a Sherlock Holmes type age. Yeah, and you watch. look at what time the train comes, there it is, you know, mm -hmm. and it's you put it back in the pocket because it's a pocket watch, you know. You don't see people using those nowadays. But anyway, he had one that, that his grandfather had given him, and he had it on the, uh, on the nightstand, um, and he wakes up in the middle of the night... And, and prior to this, there was no, um, like he wasn't seeing gremlins. He did say he saw an apparition in that, in that house. And it was just a very kind of, a, it's never like, I'm going to say mundane, but it's never mundane when you see a ghost. Okay. Yeah. But he said it was like a woman and she just like walked through the hall and kind of just faded away, was just kind of like poof, you know, like she was just gone, you know? And, uh, she was dressed like from this Victorian era looking you know the way she she looked and so she she that that other than that though he heard like uh, a voice one time um but nothing that would you know lend to what he saw yeah there, there was no obviously signs yeah of there like was this was totally cr different creatures. you know yeah there was no signs of little people yeah. infestation you know it was like uh, so he wakes up and there's these two little dudes, okay, and he said that, you know, he told me, he said they were the size of G.I. Joes, like like little G.I. Joes, you know, little, you know, and me and my wife were talking about this uh, case and uh, they were, they, one of them was going, eh, eh, like kind of he was struggling and it woke him up and he heard like them talking and you know this part, I told you the story where, where they everything sounded like SPT, like, like, yeah. They were like, like that, you know? And so, and so you probably heard the story, but anyway. The, no, the, I, I, I purposely zone out when you start telling stories, but I remember. Oh, thank you. That's a, that's a great thing to know. Well, I appreciate you, that. Yeah. If I'm about to do a show, I don't want to hear your stories beforehand. 
But yeah. um, so anyway, I, I was going over with remember, Nelly to put this, in the yeah. show. Yeah, okay. The you ST remember. was very specific because yeah. it was just weird, weird, and it made me think that it might just be because uh, they might be speaking at a normal volume for them, but just our ears can't pick it up. That's a good point. That is actually a good point. So what ended up happening was they were pulling the watch. He was so stunned, you know, by what he was witnessing. And like he woke up and he goes, dude, I literally caught myself just putting my hand, my hand on my head, kind of leaning on, you know, s- leaning on my side, watching them struggle with this watch. And he's like, they were pulling it, pulling it. And I'm thinking, where, where are they going to take it? You know, it's going to fall off of the dresser or a nightstand. And then what are they going to do? Yeah. So they kept pulling it and pulling it. And he goes, and the funny thing was that watch was silver. But he goes, there was a gold necklace and a ring right there in the jewelry box. They didn't even bother. They didn't take anything else? They didn't mess with anything else. He had a bunch of money on, on the in a, in a money clip. He had change. Um, they were just wanting that watch. And so they were pulling it and pulling it. And then they kind of looked like they were arguing. And he said, dude, it was the weirdest thing. He goes, I was just watching them. I was just mesmerized. And then he goes, one of them like gets kind of frustrated and, and puts his, his hands on his uh, knees and leans forward like he's tired. He looks up. He goes, he sees me watching him. He makes a weird sign to the other one and the other, and then they both just kind of jump down. Now, he said when they jumped off of the nightstand, he's like, I saw them. I was looking right at them. They looked completely solid, flesh and blood. They were moving the watch. They both kind of just jumped off of the nightstand, and just before they hit the ground, they disappeared. Like, poof. Wasn't anything smoke, nothing like that? Nothing, no. Vanished. They just vanished, yeah. So that was a weird story, and um, yeah, and so, you know, and, and he had contacted me to tell me his ghost episodes, and he said that it may have been ghost little people. He didn't know how to really uh, classify it. You know, he was just like, I don't know what this is, but that's what happened. They jumped off of the the, the dresser, and poof, they were gone. And curious, like, what if he reached out and was like offering to help them with it, like? To steal his own car. <laughs> hey, let me help you with that, boys. And hey, s- when you're done, here's the car keys. Let's here's see if you thing. can drive. He Get about 10 of you together. He wasn't in a hurry to stop him anyway. He was just watching <laughs> them doing it. Like what, They were going to get away with it no matter what, apparently. <laughs> Louise. But it, I, would, I, would, I would just imagine if you just picked it up and was just like, here you go. You the next time it. I see ants trying to, trying to eat something, I'm just going to help them along. Here you go. Have some more. Well, I do that anyway. Wow. I, I can't help it. I'm, I'm, ants are very interesting. Yeah, in that's eyes, cool. But... There they are. No, let's, the, oh, your like infestation like of ants. Let's just give them some more bread. And like, you know, it's um, like the. Uh, I wouldn't obviously do this, but it always makes me laugh. It's like when you see them just struggling over something. What would happen if you just <laughs> offered to help them? Yeah, you just picked it up and like, where do you want me to bring it for you? I mean, this time obviously it was a, uh, his uncle's watch, but like beforehand when they were grabbing the radio. Mm-hmm. Or uh, when Miguel, uh, when he was grabbing the radio, what if he was like struggling with it and he just picked up the radio and put it on the windowsill for him? Yeah, that would be interesting. But I mean, it's like, do you want to mess with them though? That's I'm not going to give you anything of mine that's, you know, you're stealing. I don't think that's, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, I'm not going to help you rob me. I, I mean, don't know. If you're just sitting there with like watching them, obviously you aren't in a hurry to stop them. So I was like, I just wanted, yeah. like, it'd be interesting to see what the interaction could be. Because it's like, it's very, besides the, uh, besides, I don't know, I guess after that last story, I'm just really interested in like hearing about interactions with them that are on a more pleasant level instead of the malicious ones. Here's the thing. I mean, I don't, I don't think that the interaction with the one in Wyoming was really, it was pretty, pretty uh, helpful, really. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was you know, obviously mutual. That's the thing. That's what yeah. I was really interested in. And then the ones that were taking the watch, nothing happened. They just disappeared. And I asked them, did you ever see anything that, you know, nope, never saw anything else again. Um, I guess I'm just really interested in hearing about them not being little thieving turds, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the little, the little thieving things. <laughs> you know, I mean, what about the ones in Carnes County? I mean, they just kind of came out of the field. And, yeah, they were throwing, that, that dude was throwing rocks. I think, like, they heard that and they were just like, what the heck is that? Like, and they I came think out. They, they just patrol, you know? Yeah. Like, he, he was probably like a, like a captain or something like that. He came out with his two of his buddies, two of the guys who came out and was like, "Hey, we he- we're hearing a bunch of stuff coming out this way," and then he was like, "Oh, don't worry, they're just." And they're not expecting to see a car with a, with three, you know, 
you know, young people. Because they said they were like way out in the country. Yeah, so, middle of nowhere. They're probably not used to they're used people to humans. parking right there. And yeah, I'm, just, I'm sure like they're used to humans, but they're not used to like humans being around them. Like yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, that's definitely yeah, that's probably the case. I got. I'll do one more. Uh, this is a short one. This was in Costa Rica. And this actually happened to a friend of a friend, a really good friend of mine. His friend told him this story. Uh, and my particular friend, you probably know him, um, but uh, I'm not going to say his name. Um, because he's – this weird thing. He doesn't really like talking or hearing about this kind of stuff. So he's kind of superstitious. But anyway, he says he didn't believe in it, but he's – I don't know. Anyways, uh, you can uh, tell me afterwards. Yeah, I can tell you later. But anyway, he he said he had a friend that that you know that had gone on on a vacation to Costa Rica. Now, knowing this individual, knowing <laughs> it was his friend was probably who knows what he was doing down there. I can't even tell you. But he was. This was years ago, and uh, he told me this recently, not too long. And then I inter interacted with this person, um, and he typed out this really long story. Uh, so not I didn't actually talk to him. Now I have talked to this person multiple times, but didn't for this story he just typed it out. <clears throat> now what he told me was that him and his at that time girlfriend had gone to v vacation in Costa Rica and they were staying at a hotel. And in the middle of the night, he heard like something rustling around. You know, more than one occasion. So he thought it was like rats. And he's like, dude, this is a pretty nice resort place you know why are, there shouldn't be so he complained to the hotel clerk and the clerk was kind of like uh you know and he goes what is this woman's problem like she's short circuiting while i'm telling her this you know and this individual does speak spanish um he's actually a white guy but uh he does he's, he's bilingual and um but anyway he was like in his in his girlfriend fian as uh which became his fiance and they never got married um she was hispanic she was, she was from, she's mexican and I I knew her too. And, uh, uh, so he can extend, understand those rants, those uh, when they get into fights. Yeah, and when, and, she, when she starts going off in Spanish. Yeah, when she starts talking. So so anyway, they had um, uh, a very weird relationship. It was you know to say the least. But anyway, they were down in Costa Rica and they were hearing noises. Now the first couple times it was just him, and he could have swore that the little mini fridge opened. And he was like, what the heck? And he was half asleep, you know, and he looked and there was, and then, then the door closed and he saw like a little shadow and he thought, man, it, it, this, this couldn't be rats. So he had his girlfriend who spoke way better Spanish than him at that time, go down and, uh, talk to the, the to the, the, the night clerk and the night clerk said, look, you know, these are little, these things that are happening. These are little like, like, uh, spirits. And she said, what do you mean little spirits? You know, like poquito, you know, fantasma poquitos, little, little ghosts, the way she called them. And she said, they're harmless. They might mess with things, but just, you know, and she said the hotel in, in where they were staying in that area, there, there was, that's where they lived, basically. And so she was like, oh my gosh. So she went back and she thought at the time, she thought, this woman's crazy, man. You know, she's lo loca, you know, she's saying all this, you know, whatever. And he goes, what? Little ghosts? And she's like, yeah, like little people, but they're like spirits, you know? So he went to sleep uh, in the middle of the day one time and she was out doing whatever. And he said, man, I was so tired. I just, I, I took a nap middle of the day. Probably still doesn't believe it. And, and, and no, what happened was he woke up to a blue orb floating over his bed and then it, he just watched it and he said it was just it was it was in the middle of the day but he had the curtains drawn so it was dark and uh he said that it it landed on the right next to the tv like on the dresser and he said that what what happened after that was just so bizarre like the blue orb began to kind of shimmer not shimmer he said it uh shook like it uh, vibrated um he didn't say it vibrated but he said it shook and this little person popped out of it. Like it became like a little person. You know what I mean? You mean like it shifted into one or did it like was it like I, I a don't portal? know because you're reading the story. Yeah, so you're yeah. not able to really talk to uh -huh. the person. But he said that it like, you know, became the little person. So I'm thinking it either popped out of the orb or the orb became. The, I don't know. Yeah. 
And he said that it literally jumped from there to the little desk, ran across it, and then jumped down to the fridge refrigerator and uh, began tugging on it and opened it. Uh, asked him how tall, you know, when we corresponded, and he said probably a foot tall, you know. So it wasn't like the little G.I. Joe-sized little dudes that were trying to steal the watch. They were. This was a bigger one. Or the six inch one, yeah, the, yeah. These, the, so, this is yeah. These, this twice is a, that size. this is a bigger one, yeah. Like a, like a like a like a foot tall, and he said that it was not scary looking or anything. It was just uh, like it wore like human like clothing, um, but you could tell that it it looked like um, like you know like kind of tattered. You know what I mean? Um, because he said it was like a tattered tattered clothing. It was human type clothing, and. Uh, opened the refrigerator and it literally began to try to pull a, a small liquor bottle out of the refrigerator. <laughs> At that point I told him, I, 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 you know, I messaged him back and I was like, are you serious, dude? And he's like, yes. And I know this guy, I know it's probably not going to lie to me. He's no, he's had the story for a long time. He had never told me, but in passing, he had said one time at the bar um, I have a really crazy story, you know, about a, a ghost in Costa Rica. Well, when somebody tells you they, they have a ghost story, you're thinking of a full-bodied apparition, like a tall, like a human. A, a human ghost, basically. Yeah, yeah. not like a little a normal homo ghost. Flor floriensis. And, of course, if anybody doesn't know what that is, a homo floriensis is from the island of Flora and, uh, Flor uh, Flores, where they found these little hobbit people, you know, that were like two to three feet tall, you know. And that's true. You can look that up. It's called Homo floriensis. And, and so it's a type of ancient um, hominid that was like 50,000 years ago or something, something like that, I believe. Hmm. And the so- you know, huh? I didn't know that. Well, yeah, look it up. It's crazy. You can look it up while we're talking. Yeah, I'll do it right now. And so, and then you can give us a little uh, rundown of it. But anyway, he said this thing, this little monito, as they say in Spanish, opened the door and began to pull these little small, you know, those little bitty bottles, those little liquor bottles you get like at the liquor store. Yeah, just like the one shot. They're basically the just kind like, you stuff in people's stockings, you know. That, yeah, you know. they're real tiny. Yeah, so it, it was They're basically like two go bottles, right? Mm -hmm. like, are, like plain bottles. So then he took an inventory. So this thing got, got it took off and, and, and it climbed back up. And uh, as, as he was sitting there just watching this whole thing play out, um, it began to turn back into an orb. And then it just kind of went out the window and I messaged him back and I was like, dude, so it took liquor, a small liquor bottle and then jumped back into an, or turned back into an orb or whatever, and then took off out the window, like through the wall window, whatever. Cause he said it went through the wall by the window. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and he says, yes. And I'm like, okay, that's crazy. Uh, was never got around to actually talking to him about it, uh, and I haven't spoken to him in years. Physically spoken to him, because he's really a friend of a friend, and he's kind of one of those people that you would rather just keep at arm's length. And Tony, you know the kind of people I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, I'm not friends with him, but my friend is. So like I'm around him, but mm -hmm. I'm not as acquainted. With it. And your stepdad would know that mutual friend we have, he would know him very well. Yeah. So you probably can guess what kind of person this person was like back in the day. It was like somebody that I'm not going to be like, Hey, I don't want your, whatever you're into rubbing off on me. I'm not going to hang out at your house because who knows who's going to come knocking. Yeah. I don't, you know, that kind of person. And he knows how I feel about it. It's, it's, it's like, like I'm talking cool, crap. You always have heat on you. So yes, yeah. exactly. It's almost like I'm talking crap about him. He knows, man. And now, and now he, I think he's like, you know, I don't know. I want to get into it. But anyway, this person told me, he, you know, he had no reason to ever tell me, and he he always told me he had a ghost story from Costa Rica. But every time I was around him, we were drinking, so I never got it. Never even bothered to ask. Um, but yeah, this one he he messaged me because you know so and so asked him, told too. him, hey, you know, this guy's got his show. You know, sent him. So that story is pretty crazy. A little people per little thing. Did his girlfriend ever see it? She didn't see it. No, okay. jumped out of an orb. And took liquor. And he said that when he alcoholic. went back. Alcoholics, yeah. <laughs> when he went back to look at the liquor, he said there was like six or seven of these little bottles that were gone. He said it's super expensive. You know, they upcharge you big time. So he said that you, he goes, you have he, to pay for them? Oh, yeah. Well, you yeah, know, the hotel knows that there's little demons running around They know stealing? that. That's, that's oh, a well, racket. They're gonna, that's probably, yeah, maybe it's the, they sent them. Who knows? Um, that's a racket. 
<laughs> it's funny though. He goes, dude, I didn't, I wouldn't get to drink those little miniature bottles. He goes, I had huge, big old bottles, you know, they're, they're Actual, cheap, you like know, they're, yeah, basically. you can go down to the liquor store and get them for cheap over there, you know? So anyways, that that's it for that, for that story. And yeah, folks. That also makes sense. Cause if you think about it, why wouldn't they just go into an empty room and steal the liquor bottles? Why would they go into the full, full rooms with someone actually in there? Right. Yeah. It's like if they wanted liquor, they couldn't they just go to the empty rooms or wherever they store them when they fill them up. The little, the little, uh, the, the little, little, yeah. Well, th- that's the thing. The, the the hotel clerk told his girlfriend, you know, that that they were only in that area of the hotel. They only would go into that area. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like actually like the, the because whole, the entire hotel was their whole area, not just that specific part of the hotel. Uh, you know what? That's a good point. I didn't ask that. And when you're messaging, <laughs> yeah, that's why, folks, I always tell you when you're messaging me, I'm like, hey, can we speak? If I'm going to call, story, unless it's just a small story, I'm going to real quick one. It's always better to call. But this person, I thought, you know what? I don't. What was that? Oh uh, no! Never mind. Small- I was like, the heck was that? But anyway. I just thought, you know, well, it was Anthony. He looks like the rake, yep. except he's brown. Whenever he walks fast, it's a, it's an apparition to me. Yeah, it looks weird how he walks. Um, st- uh, stick man. So anyways, I was sitting there uh, chilling, and I just saw something walk by. I was like, whoa, what was that? It was Anthony. So I, 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 you know what? That's a good question. I need to ask him that. Yeah, because like, if, like, if the hotel knows about them, but they're still charging people, and these things are going actively into people's rooms. Okay, but how are you going to prove? You're going to say like, "Oh, th- I went to your hotel, and you know, a, a tiny ghost man t- <laughs> took my liquor." And, well, and I'm laughing. I'm not trying to make fun, but it was. Well, it's like so what, fantastical. Like, wanna, how do you even? Yeah, I guess you can't really explain it to like the higher ups. Be like, "Hey, we have ghost people here taking our liquor." So <laughs> taking our liquor. So that's why you know, we can't charge little, these people, but. At the same time, it's also like, what if the hotel people was like, hey, go to this room, steal that liquor so that we can <laughs> like, charge them. And then come back with it. Yeah. So the, yeah or so just drink can... it. You can have it, but just like take it from the people who actually have like rooms here instead of I was just gonna taking say, it from us. They can just like trade them something. You come back with it and we'll give you something shiny. Something, something. better, huh? I don't know. And it kind of reminds me of the little people, the little people stories I gotten from downtown. There's not a lot of them, but you know. If you talk to people who've worked downtown, they'll tell you they've seen things in the corner of their eye and it's on the ground. It's small. And, you know, and then they'll see them like run across the bar, you know, and some of them, sometimes they'll wear little caps, you know, on their heads and uh, they never do anything like really malicious. It's always just like taking ice, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be running with ice. I think I've told that on the show before and fighting with rats. <laughs> and I'm not joking. Like, no, you know, I, actually, you yeah. know, it's funny. I was just thinking about it. Uh, I was just thinking that same thing. It was like I was wondering how they handle rats. I was wondering if like they, they domesticated them. They kill them. But I was like, you can't really domesticate a rat. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, you can, well, but not not one that's already been wild in the yeah, sewer. That's for what I'm yet. saying. The a rat rat the yeah. one that's actually out there. That's just funny to me that they they probably have like an ongoing war with rats. <laughs> they, like well, you they, imagine them in New York. That's kind of what they it, the story is downtown on, in Austin. But anyway, folks, that's it. That's all the time we have for today. Uh, like I said, tune in for the uh, the the weekly Tuesday live stream. Uh, we do it we, when we go for a while and we talk about all kinds of stuff. And, oh, uh, we can't go on for one more hour? I'm not ready to go back in the closet. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Dude, come out of the closet, man. <laughs> stay out and stay out of the closet. You I mean, don't I would have to. like to be, but you keep putting me back I'm in. not the one putting you in there. You're putting you yourself me up it's in a, there. It's, it's a mental... It's a mental... Uh, pr- it's a, just... mind of your, a prison of your own making your mind, bro. <laughs> okay. I would never make you go no, into a closet. I, it, it was fun. I actually, uh, in all seriousness, I I appreciate coming back. I enjoyed it. And swung, went right back into it. You bullying me again. Well, it's good to have a co-host that actually interacts with me because Anthony just kind of, you know, you, you you know, unless I'm doing a discussion with somebody. And folks, you know how I do my interviews. And I've told everybody that I've interviewed that's worth their salt has told me that uh, they enjoy the interviews that we do because – I talk with them, I interact with them more and we talk back and forth and it becomes a discussion. Yeah, and now that, a lot of people are used to these podcasters that, that do the interviews and they just leave the person there to just do all the talking and they just sit there and ask one question and wait and then ask a question and wait. And I've been told unanimously by the people that I deal with that they love the way I do it because they don't, I don't put all the emphasis on them. And so – that's that's kind of how I do everything, and so Anthony's gotten to where he's you know 
he doesn't really have to interact or whatever. He just kind of takes off and lets me interact with the person. But it's much better to have a, 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 a co-host to bounce things off of. And you you always bring something to the table. Yeah, because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty great. I know that personally, uh, yeah. and I appreciate that you see okay, it too. Yeah, but what I was going to say, your greatness was like, is not go- is not going to notice. I remember like the Linda Godfrey episode. Like, uh, I was uh, sitting there, but I was mostly just listening because like, I didn't want to interrupt because you guys were just going off each other and having such a, a conversation that I, like I didn't want to interrupt and be, be, like be not like uh, ruin. I, I felt like I would ruin it if I started talking in a way because like uh, you guys were vibing or going off each other and talking uh and meeting so well that like i didn't really feel like i needed to bring anything then and that that's just all you that's just all you when you talk to people and then you can open them up and have like these great conversations that like you know uh sometimes it's just i just sit back and listen to i remember the first time i met armando Mm -hmm. um it was it was the same thing uh, oh yeah we talked for several hours several hours and i barely interjected it was like uh we, it was like we were on a trip or something, and he just came. Oh to yeah, the we hotel. went. It was uh, Zane's birthday. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And we went to the Astros game, mm-hmm. and then the then 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 the we next stayed day, at a hotel. And uh, I he visited just came my by. mom, and then I hung out with him at the hotel, and we just sat there in the, in the lobby talking. It was like way late in the morning. Yeah, and then uh, we left basically. early the next day to go to San Antonio. Exhausted, but, yeah. but it was like it was worth it because it was just we were just sitting there talking to him. And um, another weird thing about that trip, we went from Houston to San Antonio. The next day it was pouring down rain, and that guy goes flying by us, and then and then we pass him later on, and his car was just completely mangled and tore up. And that's what he gets. Yeah, yeah I mean, what's the thing about? I'm pretty sure it was a fatality. I mean, yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's, pretty okay, crazy. that's not that's unfortunate. I thought that he just got. You don't it. remember that? Y'all were sleeping. I was though. sleeping. I, 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 think, thing, I think Zane was awake. I remember this conversation, uh, this ride, especially because uh, you complained about how it was raining real bad and no one was awake. Yeah, <laughs> to, to keep you awake, and yeah. we were all tired because we just spoke to Armando for like hours. But yeah. um, I remember. Why is it that every time we go to Houston, it's always pouring rain? Pouring rain. <laughs> it's, it's a horrible when I, weather. When I went with Nelly, Heather, and, and Chris that time, it was like just pouring down. And it's, it just it, it seems like so many times I've been back and forth from Houston, it's just pouring rain. Yeah. The worst though was coming back from Fort Worth, three hour drive, and it was the, and I was trying to outrun a storm, and the sheets of water were coming down. It was. Anthony's in the back seat, the seat, just snug as a bug asleep. And Nellie's next to me. She's rolled over on her side. And then we get back to Austin and, and we f- it finally stopped raining in Georgetown because the storm was was going and I outran it. And so from jo- from right outside of Georgetown, uh, in between Temple and Georgetown, and then all the way into Austin, and then the, we get home and it's not even raining yet. But then eventually it hit Austin. Um, and they were just... They woke it's up like, you know, them were, being asleep and then me and you are awake. So mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like reading something in the back. So I'm not really talking to you. So it's like, it's basically like I'm not there anyway, because I'm either, <laughs> I have my headphones in watching a movie or something. So well, it was crazy that we get, we get home and they're like, oh, long drive. And I'm like, you have I'm, no I'm, idea. I'm frazzled from like, I'm totally like just, you know, completely fried. Out, drained. Drained. Uh, having anxiety because of the, the 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 freaking weather was just awful. They're coming out like oh, lightning man. out out the yin yang. What a beautiful crazy. morning! What a beautiful yeah. day! It's been it was so like a sunny. peaceful drive for them, you know, just a sleepy time, you know. Yeah. All right, folks, that's it. That's enough time. That's all the time we have for tonight, and you know, and to complain about stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all go, and thank you for listening to P- uh, Paranormal Roundtable, and be sure to like and subscribe. And if you enjoy the stories and also uh, join the groups, Paranormal Roundtable groups, and uh, you can get a lot of good information from those groups and uh, interact, be sure and go and leave a comment from on the link for the show, Paranormal Roundtable group page and Facebook. Uh, thank you, folks. Thank you for joining us. Yep. And uh, good night.